But there can never be any confirmation. There can never be uh, a full certainty. And only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows uh, the future. In my humble opinion, if a person uh, does not want to marry a close relative, a uh, first cousin, let's say, because they feel that uh, this is not the best way in a health manner, this is not haram. The Sharia does not oblige you to marry your first cousins. You have the choice. So if you want to marry somebody basically outside of your immediate family and cousins and, and, and uncles, children, whatnot, alhamdulillah. But at the same time, to say to go to the other extreme and say, oh, everybody has to get genetic testing. Let's see if we are compatible genetically or not. I think this is basically getting involved in the knowledge of the divine. And I think that this is beyond what knowledge we have been given. And this is going to takalluf. This is going to extremes. Pray istikhara. That is your best genetic testing you can do. Pray istikhara to Allah. And if it is best, then inshallah it will be written. Um, Assalamu alaikum brother. How can you put forward the um, idea of marriage when you're so early and your parents don't want you to get married? Especially for brothers um, because their parents say that, okay, you're not earning now so you can't get married, you know? Yes, this is, as I said, one of the most difficult problems of our times is how do we convince our parents, women and men, we both have issues with our parents and our parents don't understand the pressures on us that if we don't have halal, we're going to turn to haram. If we cannot find love and romance and sexuality in a halal manner, we will turn to haram. This is human nature. Um, two points. Firstly, I don't have a solution for this answer easily, but firstly, those of you who are young and in this situation, Please remember how you feel now, 20, 30 years down the line, when you have your own kids. Please remember this. And I am optimistic that inshallah, you guys are second generation, most of you, right? The third generation, inshallah, will have a much less problem in this regard, right? I've already told my wife, I want my son to get married when he's 18 if he wants to, and I'll help him. I already told him, as soon as my son hits 18, if he wants to get married, I will pay for it, inshallah ta'ala. Because I remember how it feels to be an 18-year-old in this country, not this country, America. I remember how it feels, and I, know, I don't want my son to fall into haram and do haram. I will be a supportive father, as long as he's mature. Obviously, 18 doesn't necessarily mean you should get married. Mature. Finances, I will take care. But not every father is going to be like that. And if a father is not like that, well then, the brother should realize that is his responsibility. It's not his father's responsibility to pay for his wife. It is his responsibility. So an element of truth does exist. If the father says, who's going to take care of your wife? Unless the brother says, look, I'm working 30 hours a week along with my school. I, ha I can just afford an a, a apartment. It might not be very fancy, etc., etc. Then the father should be willing. And of course, when it comes to men, Islamically, they're not required to get their father's signature. In other words, men can act independently, even though I wouldn't advise that unless the brother thinks he's going to fall into haram. Right? Otherwise, please convince your mother and father that you want to get married. As for the sisters, it is a necessary condition that the wali approves. Right? And of course, this is an issue that I cannot overpass. I cannot tell you otherwise. Uh, if the wali is not approving, pressure should be put on him in a positive manner. From the mother, from the aunts, from the imam, from other people. And, and basically, he should be told, look, this is the right time, this is the right person. Apart from this, honestly, there's really no easy solution. And all you can do is use the weapon of the believer. What's the weapon of the believer? Dua, mashallah. Okay, alhamdulillah. With this, inshallah, jazakumullahu khairan. Uh, thank you very much for attending. Inshallah ta'ala, I hope to uh, be in touch with you, inshallah. So my name's Atik Javid, and I'm from Reading. Uh, I actually came here when it first started five years ago, and that basically got me uh, looking a bit more into the practical sides of uh, practicing the religion uh, and trying to be involved in a bit of dawah and stuff. So I thought five years on, half a decade afterwards, trying to come again. Sheikh, uh, with the Sheikh Yasser, he's quite eloquent in his speech. Uh, and he's quite knowledgeable with the hadith and stuff. So everything that he delivered was pretty much what I expected. Uh, one thing uh, I enjoyed the, quite a bit was the question answer session, although I didn't get a chance, but it was uh, good to be able to uh, get the audience engaged as well. So Alhamdulillah, it was really good. My name's Azam Benaris, I'm from Reading. Uh, through my cousin and my brother. I mean, they've come to your talks before, and it's my first time, so I'm, I'm a practicing, trying to practice at the moment with Islam, etc. When I listen to a lecture, it tells you some stuff I never knew about um, in natural romance in Islam as, as much. I thought it was more of a hidden agenda type. But now, listening to the uh, speech, I realize there's a lot more to it in life. But mm -hmm. anyway. Patient words always we. Victory is with those who never let go of thee.